thinking and looking at what it is to listen. And obviously, uh, most importantly, about listening to God. So, uh, hence the reason, as we do now with our... um, a little kind of, to call it a children's talk, a kind of introduction to the sermon, done in a a child-friendly way. Um, I've been doing a a series um, about what it is to be a Christian. What does it mean if I've committed my life to Jesus? Okay, it's a matter of kind of, now what? So kind of almost kind of, you know, if this was a uh, a discipleship course type thing of being a, a disciple of Jesus... What is, and I'm going to use the word required of me, okay? Now, we know that accepting Jesus in our life, it's a free gift. There is no, uh, there's nothing we have to pay at all, but there is that sense of actually when we become a Christian, we feel that there is a need to do something. To be a follower of Jesus means it's, it's active, as the disciples quite literally followed Jesus, they were going where he went. There's a a Jewish um, saying uh, or or a blessing that uh, people used to follow rabbis and that the sense was, may the rabbi's dust fall upon your feet. The sense that um, as you followed uh, a Jewish rabbi down a dusty road, that the dust that he kicked up You'll be so close to him, listening to what he was saying, that his dust would fall upon you. So, in being a Christian, there is this kind of obligation, if you like, or that that sense of, I want to be doing something. And one of those things that I've picked out is listening to God. Now, there's two parts to to this sermon. The first part is really hard. The second part, not so. So the first part is listening to do. And the second one is, what ways does God speak to us? So if God is going to talk to us, or if we're going to listen to God, how is God going to do that? That kind of almost that practical sense of, how do I listen to God? Well, we're going to deal with the the difficult one first. So the question I have to start with is, how much of your life do you want for yourself? Now, the honest answer to that question is everything, 100%. I want my life to be mine. I want to go where I, where I want to go. I want to do what I want to do. But there's a slight problem. Because if you want your life for yourself, then I suggest you switch off until the second part of this sermon because you're not going to like what I've got to say. But the reality is, the second part being the ways that God speaks to us, the reality is if we want the second part, if we want God to be talking to us, we've got to go through the first part first. Listening to do which I'll come on to what that means in a moment. Now, as I said before, and I'll say it again, and probably every single week in reality, of being a Christian is not the easy option. If you want, uh, life isn't easy. We know that. I'm not suggesting that life is easy at all. If you want an easier option, then don't be a Christian. That decision that um, I made when I was 19 years old down in Barnstable, when I'd left home and um, under the, uh, the, the rule and reign of my mother and father. <laughs> I'm going to get told off for that, aren't I? That's the problem. My mum listens. That's the problem. My mum listens. <laughs> There's nothing that's going to get through at all, is there? But I made that decision at 19 down in Barnstable and I came back and I got baptised. Um, by the way, we're having a baptism uh, in the seven, on the 7th of November, which is very exciting. Um, literally just here, underneath my feet, we're going to be doing that, which is, which is wonderful and exciting. Um, anyway, sorry, let's not digress too much. So, what I mean is, to be able to hear 
from God, this listening to do. We have to be prepared to live a life that demands nothing but expects everything. Okay? So we have to be prepared to live a life that demands nothing but expects everything. Because that's, that's what Jesus, he demands nothing from us at all. But there is that expectation of giving everything. You cannot earn or buy a relationship with God. It's a free gift God has offered to us to accept or reject. That's always the other option. We don't have to be in a relationship with God. And just as, almost as a, as a side thing, it can be easy even when we made that commitment to Jesus, when, we've, when we have that title, if you like, of being a Christian, that we can still not be in relationship with God. We can decide, actually, that I don't want to talk to. I don't want to listen to God. So it is, it's a, it's a once for all time, but it's also a daily thing that we need to do is to come back to the cross and accept that to us. Jesus says, follow me completely, wholeheartedly with your all. That is, that, that is the minimum requirement, okay? The standard is quite high, but amazingly, we're able to do it because of Jesus, which is kind of, it's a bit bizarre and strange, but that, that's, that's the way it happens. I want to look at a few people in the Bible who say, well, come on, prove this to me. What, you know, kind of what do people have to do? What have people done for God that has been so kind of out there and, um, and maybe followed him completely wholeheartedly? So I want to just look at just a few people in the Bible um, and what they did. It's literally kind of a sentence each on, on each one. So Ezekiel, to start with, he lay down, God, God asked him to, lay down on his left side for 390 days and then on his right side for 40 days. A message from God, Ezekiel, I want you to lie down on your side for 390 days and your left side for 40 days. There were reasons for that. And if you look in Ezekiel to find that out, to do that. Gideon, another person that an angel came to Gideon to give him a command from God. And I want you to go and fight the Midianites. Yep, we got an army. We got, you know, good uh, 22,000 people. We're ready to, to no, that's, that's too many. And as we know that story, God in the end chooses just 300, Gideon and 300 men to fight the Midianite army that filled this valley below, thousands upon thousands. And as we read that, that bit of scripture, that passage in, in Judges about Gideon, they don't mention, now I'm going to guess they probably did, but they might not have because they were occupied by the Midians. They don't mention a sword in that at all. It's, it's a torch and it's a jar. And that's it. 300 men, a torch and a jar. I, I just hope they had a few swords somewhere lying around. But that's what God used. And God asked Gideon, I want you to go up against the Midianites with just 300 men. Mary, Jesus' mother, another angel visit. If an angel ever comes near you, run. Okay? That's, that's just my advice to you. <laughs> I want you to carry a baby. But how can I? She says, and we know that story. God asking people to give completely, wholeheartedly with their all. Peter, Peter, a seasoned fisherman, fantastic. You know how to catch fish? Well, actually, I'll prove you wrong because I can catch more fish than you can if you cast your nets onto the other side. Oh, and by the way, now, forget fishing. I want you to fish for men. Giving his absolute all. Noah, um, Noah, I uh, went to get a load of wood. Okay, go for wood is, is preferable and a load of tar. And I want you to build a boat. 
No, no, not, not a kind of little dinghy or not a kind of little rowing boat. I want you to build a boat that will have two of every animal on the planet on it. Noah had to dedicate, I don't know how many years it was, I should have probably looked that up, um, but he had to dedicate years and years and years of his life to follow God completely, wholeheartedly with his, with his all. Jonah, and we know Jonah, Jonah ends very sadly, I know, but God comes to Jonah and says, I want you to go to your worst enemies and tell them that I love them and I have compassion for them. A really impossible thing to do. Martha. What about Martha? We know Mary and Martha. And then you kind of, what, what on earth are you going to say about Martha? What was Martha always doing? Well, she was always doing, wasn't she? She always had something to do. There was, there was pots to, to clean. There was food to prepare. There was a yard to sweep and everything. And this is a bit of a strange one. But Jesus telling Martha, stop being hospitable. Stop it. Just come and sit and listen. And then we know, don't we, of Jesus himself. What did God ask Jesus to do? To go to the cross, to save humanity. Jesus, we think, and I always, that image and that picture of Jesus in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, where the Bible tells us that he cried uh, or, or, or sweated like um, uh, sweat like blood was coming from him. And he says, doesn't he, not my will but yours be done. It's not something that Jesus did easily. I think sometimes we forget that, or I forget that. That it's not something that Jesus did easily was to go to the cross. But his father asked him to. And so he did. He gave for us, completely, wholeheartedly, and with his whole all. The harsh reality of being a Christian is what is required of us. That's why I say being a Christian is the hardest thing that we'll ever do. Let's open the Bible up, shall we? James chapter 1, verse 22. We're just going to look at just literally one verse uh, today. Verse 22 of James chapter 1. I think it, um, it might come on. I don't know. No, that's fine. No worries at all. And you have to look it up on, in your Bibles or in, on your phones. Um, there's some great um, apps, and I forget what the one app is called now, but uh, Uversion is a great version to have on your phone um, or uh, on, your, on your laptop or on your, your computer. Uh, Bible Gateway is another great uh, one to go to as well. Um, so James chapter 1 verse 22, it says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Four very small words with massive impact. Do what it says. Am I, are you prepared to be a Jonah, an Ezekiel, a Mary? To be a great person of God, because in one respect, we, we want to be great people of God. But we have to put the hours into it, don't we? Everyone is thinking of uh, maybe an exception to that. Who is it in the Bible that I can think of that is an exception to that? To be a great person of God, you've got to put the hours in. Well, I couldn't think of anybody myself. As I went through the Bible, I think the majority of those people that I've mentioned, the majority of people that I haven't mentioned, they all had to put hours and hours in to achieve what they, what they achieved, not for themselves, but for God. People had to make sacrifices. Mary had to make sacrifices. She knew, didn't she, that the reality of her being pregnant out of marriage, that she could have been stoned to death. That was a big decision. No, 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 God, that is, that's, too, that's too big 
a thing for me to do. But she knew, didn't she, that if God asked her to do it, that God's protection would also be there. And that's really difficult, isn't it, sometimes to to make that initial step, to say to Jesus, to say to God, yes, and, and kind of almost that kind of jumping off a cliff of kind of, he's going to catch me, or the kind of, that, is that parachute going to work kind of, kind of thing. And we look at the Bible, don't we? We say, oh, they're such amazing men and women of God. I could never be like, like Ruth or like Esther or, or like Deborah or, or other people, Gideon or, or Peter or Noah. All those people, they're amazing men of God. Joseph, what an ordeal he went through. But we need to remind ourselves that those people were ordinary people that did extraordinary things because of that first step that they made. They were people like you and like me. So what do we do? Sorry, let's read that again. But what do I do? No, start again. But what do I need to do? But what do I need to do? That's a question. I put a comma. Okay, so let's start again, shall we? What do I need to do? I need to read the Bible. I need to read this to start with as well, don't I? Um, And then I need to do what it says. So like you now, you're probably thinking, what on earth are you on about? Because in my head, none of that has made any sense at all. So let's start all that over again, shall we? So if I'm going to merely, not merely listen to the word and deceive myself, but do what it says, what do I need to do? I need to read the Bible and I need to do what it says. I want to ask the question of me and of you. What is God saying to you? As you read the Bible, as you pray, what is God saying? Now, here's the thing that I think we need to be very upfront about and very clear. And that Paul, no punches, they might say. Is what God is saying to you what he is saying to you? Or is it just you saying it to you? Okay, so I really believe that God has told me to dot, 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 to um, uh, buy a Ferrari, for example. Okay, now, is that because Jonathan Kia would love to own a Ferrari? Or is God actually saying to Jonathan Kia, buy a Ferrari? Now, Um, We won't take a a poll here and put your hands up, but I think the majority of you know that God wouldn't tell me to buy a Ferrari, okay? I don't think that's, it's not in God's character to do that. So we really got to think really hard, very clearly, is what God is saying, is God really saying that, or is that just me hoping, wishing even, that God would say that. So, in hearing from God, you need to respond in a manner which is right. You need to test it and test it. You need to go back to the Bible. You need to get people to pray for you, pray with you. And you need to be constantly checking what you are doing is the right thing. And that's why we need to, in the first instance, in wanting to listen to God, if we say, yes, God, I really want to listen to you, we have to do, as James said in chapter 1, verse 22, don't merely listen to the words. We've got to do what it says. And it's, for me, it's in the doing that I've found that that's when I've really known what God has said to me is from God and not just Jonathan's imagination or or his dreams. Now, 
I've made a deal with God. Okay. In coming back to the Forest of Dean, as I did uh, about nine years or so ago, in doing this thing that, um, that I called Together for Youth, which is basically working alongside and with churches to help them with children's and youth work, I said to God nine years ago, I will do this until the money runs out. Nine years later, I'm still here. Now, that's both good and that's both bad, okay? Now, I'm not wishing to be slapdash or kind of sort of glib about that at all, okay? Because God doesn't need me, okay? Jonathan Kia thinks that God needs Jonathan Kia, but that's not necessarily the case. But he did choose me. And that's really, really important. God chose me to do what I'm doing. And I want to put that back to you. What you are doing for God, God has chosen you to do that particular task or that thing. I am not indispensable. I am not needed. And that's the same for you as well. Now, I think for me, and, and hopefully everybody is the same on this to, to a, a degree or certain, that we all, we all like to be needed, don't we? We all like to kind of feel that, um, oh, without Jonathan, oh, where would we be? Oh, you know, or without, you know, oh, what a, what a, what a terrible place or, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, whatever it might be. That sense that actually I'm needed to be here. Well, God chose me to be here. God chose you to be here. He could have got anybody to do the job you're doing, but he chose you. You're both ordinary and you're both very, very special. Okay? I know that kind of it sounds a bit weird, doesn't it, really, to kind of say, well, you're not really needed, but no, you really are needed. But that's the case, isn't it? That you are needed, but also you're not needed as well. We need to make sure that we're doing what God says to us. Because, and as I said to God, as soon as uh, you want me to do something different, I will do something different. So I'm waiting to hear at some point for God to say, Jonathan, you've done what I wanted you to do with Together for Youth, with Children's with Youth work, and now you can go back to the farm and milk cows again. It's one day, one day God will say that. But at the moment he hasn't. And so do I, do I hanker after the farm? Do I kind of desire to be on the farm and, and, and maybe spend every, every second thinking about it and, and kind of planning and dreaming? Well, no, I don't. Because I know that it's in God's hands. If, and it is an if, slash when God, please. If. God ever calls me back to the farm, I know when I take that step, that leap of finishing what I'm doing in children's and youth work and go to the farm, or whatever it might be, I'm just using that as the example, okay, that I know that God will provide all of my needs. So I don't need to plan and prepare that yet because God is already doing the planning for me. And maybe that's more of a wish than it is a prayer. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so, but if he does, what do I need to do? I need to, who's been listening? Listen, well, that's, that's halfway there. Beginning with T, do what it says. Before that, do I have to start again? <laughs> so, my sermon today begins with T. It's got an est after it. Th thank you, thank you. Test. I don't just go ahead and do it. Oh, God's told me to go back to the farm. No, I've got to test it. I've got to pray about it. I've got to go back to the scripture. And I've got to read the Bible. I've got to pray. I've got to draw people in and say, will you pray with me? I think God's saying I need to go back to the farm. I need to test it to make sure. So, that was the first part of our sermon on uh, listening to God. 
Now, I think the first part, as I said, is the hard part of it all. So the second part, what ways does God speak to us? I'm going to tell you next time. (laughs) It's a cliffhanger. Eh? So, uh, on a serious note, next time, I'm not doing it now. Um, Because I thought, actually, let's just break this down into two, two, two sermons. Okay, rather than one sermon. I can see Avril's face. She was eyeing the clock. I saw her doing that. I saw her. She got caught. I thought, no, I'm not going to make eye contact with her at all. <laughs> but, because I thought it was really important, actually, just to set out in listening to God, that it, it requires us to act first. It requires us to put the man hours, woman hours, people hours, children hours in to it so indeed next time i'm up here preaching which might be in a couple of weeks time or so i will tell you we'll just go through different ways that we can hear scriptural ways that we can hear from god amen Mm